Welcome back. I'm Cassandra, and this is Fantasy Survival. Now, Fantasy Survival is a series where I explore our favorite fantasy characters and what survival skills and or gear our favorite hero or villain might need to survive their fantasy world or situation. This is the third part of a multi-part series where we are using the five C's of survival and exploring what the Dunedain Rangers from the Lord of the Rings survival gear would be. The five C's of survival are used in the survival or self-reliant world as a simple way to remember the basics of the basic gear needed when surviving in the wilderness. The five C's are cutting, combustion, cover, containers, and cordage. Now, J.R.R. Tolkien uses a lot of medieval influence in his writing of Middle Earth. So we will be referencing a lot of medieval gear and skills when talking about this subject. In the last two episodes, I talked about the gear a Dunedain Ranger would use in the cutting and combustion category. The third category we're going to discuss is cover. This includes tarps, tents, ponchos, or in the case of a ranger, cloak, and anything else used to protect from the natural elements. Aragorn was a ranger of the north, first introduced with the name Strider. This is one of the descriptions from the book describing Strider's look. Suddenly, Frodo noticed that a strange looking weather beaten man sitting in the shadows near the wall was also listening intently. He had a tall tankard in front of him and was smoking a long stemmed pipe curiously carved. His legs were stretched out before him, showing high boots of supple leather that fitted him well, but had seen much wear and were now caked with mud. A travel-stained cloak of heavy, dark green cloth was drawn close about him, and, in spite of the heat of the room, he wore a hood that o overshadowed his face, but the gleam of his eyes could be seen as he watched the hobbits. The Fellowship of the Ring, Chapter 9 The rangers were grim in life, appearance, and dress, choosing to wear rustic greens and browns. Tolkien specifically mentions boots and cloaks in his description of a ranger. The cloak and a good pair of shoes would be a staple item for the cover category. So let's first discuss the cloak. Cloaks for traveling in the medieval period tended to be wool that is thick and warm, often fur-lined for those who could afford such luxury. Wool, with its weather-resistant properties, made it a natural choice for outdoor wear. For this reason, cloaks can be very utilitarian. This would not only be a great choice for a ranger, but any adventurer. There are a wide variety of cloak styles, but all serve the same basic purpose. You're wearing a blanket. My favorite cloak for a ranger, or just my favorite cloak, would be a ruana. The Rana is sim similar to other poncho-like garments from Latin America. Now, the Ruana is basically a very thick, soft, and sleeveless square or rectangular blanket with an opening in the center for the head to go through, with a slit down the front to the hem. What is universally agreed upon is that the Ruana is old, worn as early as the 15th century, decades or more before the Spanish set foot in Latin American region. And from what I can understand, the Celtics also had a Ruana style shawl during this time, which would make the style fall in the late medieval period, which is where Tolkien takes a lot of his inspiration. It might not be historically accurate to the European medieval period, but it did exist. This cloak is very simple and versatile. When traveling light, rangers need items that serve multiple purposes. 
This rectangular garment can be worn in various ways depending on the weather and circumstances. You can secure the front with a brooch and wear it like a traditional cloak. You can wear it like a scarf. You can wrap it across your body and style it like a tunic. You can wear it off one shoulder, leaving your sword hand free of the nuance of extra fabric floating around when trying to fight. And one of the wisest of the fellowship wore a Ruana style cloak in the movie adaptation, Gandalf. If this cloak style is good enough for him, it should be good enough for the rangers. And although his cloak is long, it can be made shorter for a ranger to allow for easier movement. And regardless of the style of cloak, a cloak could be used as a tent. Using found sticks as a tent pole and rope, the cloak could be stretched into a tent structure. And with the woolen material of the cloak, it would offer a natural weather resistant barrier for the ranger. If the ranger didn't have a cloak with an attached hood, they would most likely have a separate hood with a cowl or a mantle. A woolen hood with a cape that covered the shoulders is one of the traditional headdresses in medieval Europe. The hood would be rain resistant and it would keep your body warm. The separate hood from the cloak would make sense if a ranger intends to use the cloak also as a makeshift tent. That way he would still be able to keep his head, neck, and shoulders warm and still have a tent to protect from the elements. Now let's discuss footwear of a ranger. Like the description of Strider I shared earlier, I think most rangers would wear a pair of high boots rather than simple shoes. A higher boot would offer not only protection for the feet, but for the lower leg as well. The style Strider wears in the film looks like it could be some type of late medieval cavalier style boot where the floppy top portion of the boot has been rolled over and then tied down. This folded down portion could then be folded up for extra knee protection while riding a horse. This extra protection and versatility not only makes it a great option for surviving different scenarios, but practical as well. In the earlier medieval period, pointy shoes were popular, but around the late 15th century, the rounder toe came into fashion beginning in Italy, which is more of the style we get from Tolkien. Boots during this period became full and baggy with excess of leather being used in their construction. Boots made of leather were worn during winter to protect from the cold and rain, and keeping your feet warm and dry is very important when surviving in the wilderness. Rangers might also carry a bedroll. Bedrolls consist of a wool blanket and either an animal skin or canvas tarp that has been waterproofed. The canvas tarp could then be strung across two fixed points and make a quick shelter. A simple lean-to or frame tent would be something that could be done with a canvas tarp and would be easy to break down when you are a ranger on the go. The bedroll could also be used to carry extra items. A ranger could roll items into a blanket or canvas that might not fit into his pouches he wears on his belt. This way, the bedroll will not only fit into the cover category of the five C's of survival, but also the container category in which I will discuss in another video. Rangers would also possess enough bushcraft skills to create a simple shelter referred to in the survival world as a debris, a debris hut. The debris hut is an extremely versatile wilderness survival shelter. It can be built in almost any habitat and does not require tools or special equipment. 
This shelter is constructed using sticks and any available debris, such as leaves, moss, ferns, bark, etc. Hence the name Debris Hut. The hut functions by insulating you from the elements using layers of natural material. Layers of leafy material on the outside shed rain and block wind while helping to keep the heat inside the shelter. The ranger could also combine his canvas tarp from his bedroll and his knowledge of the debris hut and use them together. This way he would be able to increase the sleeping area and create an extra layer of insulation around him to keep the warmth of the fire inside. It could also be a way to camouflage his sleeping area, making him a bit stealthier while still keeping warm and dry. An important thing to note is hypothermia is the number one cause of death in the outdoors. You are far more likely to become hypothermic if you or your clothing get wet, as water draws away body heat 25 times faster than normal. This is why waterproof rain gear and shelter materials are so important in most environments. Being able to keep yourself warm, dry, and sheltered is important for survival. As Ranger spend a majority of his time outside fighting and traveling, he needs to have the proper gear to protect himself from the natural elements. A proper cloak, pair of boots, and shelter is necessary for a Ranger's survival. This has been my video on the cover portion of the Dunedain Ranger's Five C's of Survival. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't seen the first two videos, feel free to go back and watch them now and uh, continue to stay tuned for the next videos in this series. Thanks.